uh, in chapter 5 there are going to be four different sections in the first section we are going to discuss why we need to go for compression okay, so the whole of chapter 5 is on index compression that is trying to compress the inverted index and the, f the very first thing we are going to look at is why do we need to compress uh, the index the second section of this chapter will deal with collection statistics so we are going to look at how uh, how terms are distributed in document collections okay, we are going to look at for example uh, how do we estimate the number of terms that will be there in the dictionary and how do we estimate the nature of the uh, how do we estimate the, the length of the postings list that will be there in the index so estimating the length of the uh, the size of the dictionary and the size of the postings list is something we'll do uh, in, in the second section and again we're going to rely on the Reuters corpus that we were looking at in the last one or two lectures the third section of the chapter will specifically focus on how we can compress the dictionary of the inverted index and the last section of the chapter will focus on how we can compress the postings of the inverted index so that's that's going to be the overall flow of this chapter so let's look at the first section which is uh, let's first try to understand why it's useful to do compression in an inverted index so why do we need to uh, compress in general so the very first uh, reason that you may think of for compress compressing not just an inverted index but any kind of data is to use less of memory okay use less of your hard disk space because if you use less space then you'll be using less hardware and so you're going to save a little money that's the first reason and that's not going to be such an important reason for us when we are studying information retrieval because hardware uh, especially hard disks are pretty cheap nowadays there are two other uh, two more important reasons for why we may want to do compression in the context of IR the first thing has to do with uh, the, the first reason has to do with exploiting caching okay, so if you are able to keep more stuff in memory as a result of compressing uh, what we are storing in memory then that's going to increase the speed of the system as a whole right so for example if you are able to compress uh, the dictionary then maybe without compression the dictionary won't be able to fit into main memory but with compression maybe uh, it, it might fit into main memory so clearly storing the dictionary in main memory is going to be advantageous because ultimately we have to look up the dictionary first when trying to answer a query and even if the dictionary is comfortably fitting into main memory it may still be useful to compress it because the remnant space the remaining space can be used to store some of the postings lists from the disk right if you look at the uh, most frequent queries for example you may want to cache the results of those queries in main memory so that you don't have to repeat those calculations when those queries are uh, coming again in the future so keeping more stuff in memory or caching more stuff in memory is going to help you increase the speed of the system the second reason uh, in the context of IR why we may want to do compression is that if we don't compress the data let's imagine a, a, a scenario where we actually don't compress the postings list for example in that case we will be reading those uncompressed postings lists from the disk into main memory okay so let's say the length of the uncompressed postings list is this much now after compression maybe the length would just be this much so note that with a longer postings list in with an uncompressed postings list 
the amount of time it will take for transferring this entire postings list from the disk into main memory will be more as a result of this additional disk I.O. that will be needed over and above the size of the postings list when it is compressed. So if we, if we are able to compre compress the postings list and then bring it from the disk into main memory and then decompress it in main memory, that turns out to be faster than reading the uncompressed data directly from the disk. And that's because the speed of uh, modern processors is very high. So decompression is pretty fast. What takes more time is transferring data from disk into main memory. That's the main, uh, that's the main uh, barrier in terms of optimizing the time. That's what takes up the maximum amount of time. So if you're able to shorten your postings this as they're stored on disk, you'll be minimizing that disk I/O time. And that's, uh, and once you get that smaller list into main memory, it's pretty easy to decompress it quite fast. So decompression algorithms are fast. And that's particularly true of the algorithms that uh, we are going to see. And so uh, it makes sense to compress the data, both in the dictionary and in uh, the postings list. Okay, any questions about that? I have one more slide here. So compressing the dictionary makes sense because it needs to be small enough that it can fit into main memory. And even if it is already small, it may make sense to make it even smaller so that we can use the remaining space to store postings lists in uh, in main memory, some of the postings lists at least. And it makes sense to uh, compress the postings lists because you'll be reducing the disk space needed. And that's a relatively minor reason. The more important reason is you'll be decreasing the time needed to read that postings list from the disk because it will be shorter after compression. And many times large search engines do keep many of the postings lists in memory. And compression is what allows you to do that. So that popular queries can be answered fast. And so we look at compression schemes that are specific to uh, information retrieval systems. So that finishes with the first section that I talked about. Why do we need to do index compression?